Welcome everyone to SmackDown Live on 11 01 16 November 1st 2016 welcome guys it's your boy Jim here and guess what you know before I get into this video before I review SmackDown which was good I actually paid attention a little bit I actually stayed up and did not fall asleep and you know I chilled and relaxed and that's what SmackDown's for so before I get into the video like I said please leave a like Click the subscribe button if you're new, and follow your boy on Twitter. The link is in the description box below. I will always be t live tweeting if I'm watching the show, of course, right? If I'm not, if I'm not home to watch the show, then I'll just, I'll tweet that I'm not home watching the show. So, yeah. All right. So let's get into the show. We we were live from Newark, New Jersey. I'm surprised Grim's Toy Show didn't fucking go there because he's from New Jersey. No. Okay. So we start out the show with. James Ellsworth, all right, James Ellsworth come out with a huge pop from the SmackDown fans here in Newark, talks about last week and how he needs to pay back Dean Ambrose, or, or he, he owes Dean Ambrose and shit, right, and Ambrose comes out, you know, Ellsworth wanted to tell Ambrose, look man, I'm sorry, I may have cost you your title, but look man, I'm really, really, really sorry, okay, I'm sorry. Ambrose was like, nah, you good, you good, you don't need to apologize, it's all to the good, bro, it's all to the good, right, and H.E. Styles, Styles comes out and he's like, look man, the only person that deserves an apology is me, yo bitch ass dude Ambrose don't deserve no apology, I do, and Ellsworth, I own your career, you owe me your career, man. It wasn't for me even choosing you to fight me. You wouldn't have a name right now. Okay? That's what basically H.E. Styles is saying. And Ambrose is like, look, man, James Ellsworth is a hardworking man looking to tell the honest truth. And you like to take cheap shots to get ahead. And then Ellsworth tried to, you know, stop them off. But uh, AJ Styles was like, hot, nope. And he pushed uh, Ellsworth into Ambrose. And had to toss his Ellsworth onto the outside. And then gives Dean Ambrose the phenomenal forearm right to the jaw. By God. So, that's how we kick off Smack It Down Live. And then we come back from commercial break. We had Randy Orton with the hoodie. Randy Orton looked like a damn thug with, those, with the hoodie, with the tattoos. Randy Orton comes out to fight Kane. In a no DQ match, which I uh, I really need to pay attention. I did not realize there was a no DQ. But like when the match started, right? I'm like, okay, here we go. Randy Orton versus Kane. Last time uh, these two had a no DQ match, I think, was back at July 22nd, 2011 on SmackDown, right? Which made Kane how he is now, the way how his attire is and everything. That's the main reason why. But I digress. Randy Orton went straight for a chair, and I'm like, okay, okay, Randy Orton's gonna get DQ'd off the bat. This new aggression, he's just doing this just to fuck around everyone. But no, 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 Kane stopped him, and then, you know, Kane used the chair instead. We cut, and after they had, a, I think they had a commercial break. No, no, they didn't, they didn't. Um, it was like a two, three minute match, actually. And then before. The White family came through. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper came through, and and uh, well, tried to, uh, or Randy Orton tried to go for the RKO, got a big boot instead. Kane got attacked by the Wyatts or distracted by the Wyatts, and then Randy Orton hit him with the RKO right in front of the Wyatt family. One, two, three. Randy Orton does the pose, the legendary. The legend killer poles with the white family in the background followed the buzzards. That was some creepy sh I'll tell you that much. So Randy Orton wins this match and yeah. So we uh we uh go backstage to where Alexa Bliss and Carmella walking through, Carmella interrupting someone doing something, I don't know what, I, I I can't I can't remember at all. 
But we come back from the break, uh, we, we get a Baron Corbin video package where Baron Corbin, you know, saying how, you know, family members and, you know, you know, friends and fans are just holding him back, their setbacks and blah, blah, and stuff like that, you know, basically saying, y'all bitches holding me down. Fuck all y'all. I need to succeed in WWE, so I don't need y'all, all right? So that's what's basically Baron Corbin saying there. Baron Corbin was not shown tonight. I'm surprised, but uh, we'll get to we'll get to that later on with Baron Corbin. Um, Nikki Bella and Becky Lynch had a match against Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Alexa Bliss. God damn. Mm, mm, mm. Um, she she did something that nobody realized. All right, she did this uh, last month. Alexa Bliss pinned Becky Lynch. The SmackDown before their their uh, their match uh, that got canceled at No Mercy, right at uh, last month October. And tonight she does the same thing, pinning Becky Lynch before their championship match the next week, or the or the. Yeah, the next week or the next couple in the, in the, or the next couple of days. So, will Becky Lynch go down with an injury again, or will we actually get the match? Because, like I said, Alexa Plus did this last month, and that's what happened. Becky Lynch was off TV for three weeks, so we'll see what happens. Alexa Plus gets the win over the champ once again. So after the after the match, new SmackDown correspondent Dasha. Fuance from NXT tries to interview Bliss and Carmella in the ring, but they shoo her off, run down the Raw Superstars, the Hype Survivor Series. Bliss call also cuts a promo on Becky Lynch, how she's gonna beat beat her for the title and whatnot, how she's the wicked witch. Look, to me, Alexa Bliss is a modern day Trish Stratus, and before Trish Stratus became one of the greatest women's champion of all time, one of, not the, alright, dickheads, one of, meaning, you know, there's more, you know, she, she's in a list, alright, she's in, not not my death list, not Jericho's list, just in a list of wonderful women's champions from the past, alright, just saying, have to clear that out, so, she reminds me of Trish Stratus so much, you know, I mean, she's she's smaller than Tris, obviously, but she kind of resembles like uh, her. She kind of resembles Tris a little bit, and you know, eh, I mean, it kind of looks like her too. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. So I'm not the only one. So Brian and Shane are backstage with Naomi, saying that she's gonna be the SmackDown Survivor Series team for the women. And Natalia comes in talking about cats and being coach and and doing that uh, thing, you know the 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 I don't know the purring. I don't know what it was. I mean, it was awkward when she did the Shane, but I mean, if I had her in my bed and she did that shit, then <sighs> Tyson Kidd, watch out. Okay, um, so. <laughs> So, we uh, still to come, Ambrose versus Styles, main event, all sorts, banned from ringside. So, we come back from commercial breaks, uh, Spirit Squad versus American Alpha. American Alpha, thank God, defeated the Spirit Squad within three minutes. The Grand Amplitude, or whatever the move is called, I can't pronounce it, that's the problem. And, yeah, I don't know why the Spirit Squad are there, they they have no purpose anymore. It, it, I mean, seriously, I mean, come on, just end it. Just leave. I mean, is your contract up by, like, next month or something? Leave, man. You have no purpose. I don't want to see you no more. I mean, Kenny, you ripped. Shit. But what purpose do you have anymore, man? You know? So, they hop up Brock Lesnar and Goldberg at Survivor Series. Back from the break, Miz and Maurice. Maurice needs to shut the fuck up. And I mean this, Okay. Maurice and the Miz and the Panda Ring and the Miz TV and the the the, 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 the Oh my God! Shut up! 
Burris, you're good because you're from Canada, not the dump called the United States. So, right? Brian comes out, gets a huge pop like he always does. The yes champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Brian announces, you know, qualifying matches for the tag team. Uh, Survivor Series match. And Miz wants to know about the men's Survivor Series tag team uh, uh, match. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Brian announces Randy Orton, Baron Corbin, Brian, uh, Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose, and the WWE World Champion AJ Styles for the Team SmackDown. And Miz was not happy. And then they had a. They went back on words. Miz says something about Total Bellas and living in John Cena's house. Brian got pissed, saying that he's not a good wrestler. We all know that. Daniel, say something else, please. I'm not going to lie. I did I did mark out when he's all, all like, oh, shit. Oh, man, you got called out. Oh, shit, you can't wrestle for shit. Oh, I, I even tweeted up, I can wrestle in my chair. And I can wrestle the air. I could grapple the air. And I'll have a better match than the Miz. And I'm not bullshitting, okay? I am not bullshitting. The reason why people got behind Miz this past month and a half for two months is mainly because the story they told with him and Ziggler. If it wasn't for that story, do you really think anyone's going to care about the fucking match? No. No. Just saying. So, Ziggler comes out. You know, he gets he has to defend his title in the Open uh, Championship Challenge match. Kurt Hawkins comes out. He did the job for two minutes. Or two minutes. That was like a 15 second match. And then Ziggler did something interesting. He laid out a challenge to any Raw superstars to challenge him for the IC title. Damn! And Miz got pissed. But he's like, no, no, no. You're defending it on my terms. Fuck you. You're defending the IC title on my terms, okay? And Dolph Ziggler's like, look, man, any Raw superstar got balls? Come on. I got you. Let's go. Me and you. One-on-one -on -one for the IC title. Damn. I would love to see that. I even tweeted out. Is that interesting? Do you guys like that? A lot of people said yes so far. So, ooh, I'm going to stick with that shit. Uh, Ambrose had a backstage segment. Uh, Ellsworth. Blah, blah, blah. Just skip, skip, skip. <sighs> I'm just gonna skip ahead. Backstage segment, I don't really care. Uh, Usos versus Headbangers. I knew the Usos were winning. There's no fucking chance the Headbangers are gonna win. Uh huh. But I even tweeted out this though American Alpha and the Usos are the same team though. Uh oh. I'm gonna leave it at that. AJ Styles and Ambrose had a great match. I I loved the ending. Ellsworth came in, uh, came through and he just distracted the referee a little bit, but distracted AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose. Security guards came through. I'm like, okay, fine, fine. He's out. I want Ambrose to win because I want these guys to go at it again. I'm not gonna lie. Since Cena's not there, you know, I kind of need someone to fill in. And Ambrose is still that guy because Ambrose did not get pinned at no mercy, I think. So, yeah, that's my reasoning. So, AJ Styles had to go for the phen phenomenal form. That, so, the last moment in the in the match, also came through the, the ring area. He got in. He almost was about to get in the ring. Security finally caught him. AJ Styles, you know, when the security brought Ellsworth to the other side of the ring, um... You know, the the security had him by the, the announce table. AJ Styles came down and he pushed him onto the table. And then, you know, AJ's about to go for the phenomenal form. He jumps and Ambrose kind of with a dirty deeds. One, two, three. Dean Ambrose is your number one. I, can tell. I popped. I marked out. I'm not going to lie. I, I lost. I was like, yes! Yes! I was like, Ambrose, dirty deeds! One, two, Yes! And, it, and it, that's it. Ambrose, number one contender. And Shane McMahon on Talking Smack just now announced that Ambrose will face uh, AJ Styles' TLC match at SmackDown Live's exclusive pay-per-view WWE TLC Fuck the Stairs. So, and that's it. Also, you know, was smiling as, as the security guards bringing up to bringing him up to the stage, and Ambrose shakes it off, and then after helps Ellsworth get up to his feet. And SmackDown goes off the air. And that's SmackDown. What do you guys think, man? I mean, SmackDown felt solid, you know. There was reasoning. The trick or street fight that Elmo, Amore, and, and Luke Gallows had last night had no meaning. 
So, you see, SmackDown is building to Survivor Series, if you think about it. They have meaning to all their matches on why this match is happening. Yet, Monday Night Raw, we have a U.S. title match. Why? Because, you know, one, one guy challenged for the title and, okay, automatically accepts and McFoley made the match. Okay. Um... Did not punish that Jericho got involved in the Hell in the Cell match. Okay. Um, not building to Survivor Series at all. Just building up Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. So, SmackDown is forward. Raw is still behind. If you think about it. So, I think SmackDown... I, I think I should just stop watching Raw. So I think we should all just give up on Raw. Raw is basically dead. Unless they announce Goldberg or Lesnar. No, fuck it. Uh, unless Goldberg is there... Do not watch Monday Night Raw. So what do you guys think, guys? What do you guys think about SmackDown? Leave a poll on the top right of your screen. You know, you can follow on how SmackDown was for you. Uh, leave your comments down below. Leave a like on this video. Like I said, uh, Twitter link is always in the description. And I'm out. A later.